Well, thank you so much, Bill. And uh, I really want to say to everyone, especially Chuck Bargeron and the whole team at uh, University of Georgia and Elizabeth and all the folks at NASMA, thanks for the invitation to help kick off the summit this week. It's going to be a really great summit. Uh, a lot of good presentations, lots of information shared on how EDMAPS is helping to unify the invasive species community all across North America. And I'd like to open it with a few common issues we face, you know, the connection to, to EDMAPS, how this is all coming together. So something we're facing collectively is this capacity shortage. And, uh, you know, that's not having enough to get the job done, no, no matter what that is. And it's not easy to address this. It's getting harder for most of us to reach our goals because of it. But no matter where you are, you're likely being asked to do more with less. Um, you'll see in this funny cartoon, sometimes they're just telling you to go somewhere else. You know, it's just, <laughs> it's just a struggle. So how can we overcome this problem together? And are things that you're doing now, doing stuff in a way that can have someone look at this and be a supporter? Who's out there that can help you solve this? Who's out there that can help you accomplish this? What are you doing now that someone else can help you accomplish in your mission? So I think the root cause of some of this capacity gap problem is the lack of a clear connection between the quality of our invasive, this quality of our lives and the potential risk or impact from invasive species. So as we struggle to gain the support we're needing, there's a number of questions that are usually raised whether they're from your supporters or your you know, folks who are questioning what you're doing. But no matter how you view the situation, the invasive species problem is not gonna go away and, and they're not gonna give you a break while you're struggling. Can you articulate why it matters to your neighbor and what you need? Capacity gaps exist at all levels and in many different ways. Nobody has enough and we tend to struggle usually alone, but don't worry, you're not alone. Building strength to respond to invasions in both the public and private sectors requires a unified effort. I'd like to point out that we respond to wildfires in a completely different way. Notice, as you see this on the news, how unified the fire community is to deal with problems. So how do we get there? I'd like to start with the basics. The invasive species threat is foremost an environmental issue, but it has both human dimensions and economic aspects to consider. This factors into how people perceive it. It demands a scientific approach and it needs to be built on collaboration. These science-based approaches should incorporate advanced information management and networking to be most effective across the entire invasive species arena. But as we advance the scientific approach, it's important to be innovative. I wanna stress that we don't need to be reinventing the wheel. What has come before us, the ideas, the technologies, the techniques, all of this has provided us a foundation upon which we currently stand, and the advancements in the past have led us to where we are today. Current capacities and current capabilities, the tools, the technologies, things we're using now that were once considered cutting edge are, and innovative still do work today. So invest wisely in the future. There's always room for improvement, but remember, it's an 80% game. You're not going to always reach perfection. Use what you got, make the best out of it, and move forward. So despite all of our scientific efforts, there's still challenges and barriers to success. We've all experienced this in many different ways. And sometimes we forget the social side of the issue. The pervasive streak of independence across the invasive species community plays a big part in why we're not strongly unified. So what can be done to fix this? Just think about that. EDMAPS programs and technologies can help us move in the same direction towards the goal of unification. But each of us need to help lower the barriers and challenges that are out there, increase our cohesion and our collaboration. So as most of you know, a great opportunity to build capacity to respond to invasive species threats is the support of the people who are impacted by those threats. So that means everybody. We have millions of potential supporters out there living all around us. Public support can come in many different ways, materially, politically, spiritually, Lots of different ways we can gain support from our publics. How are you making connections with new people in other sectors or other arenas? How are you working outside of your comfort zone? Are you reaching out to new partners who can help you advance your programs? Ask yourself a lot of questions about this and see if it can give you some answers. Are you being inclusive? Well, this is where EdMaps can really help us get the job done and connect the dots. 
Know the enemy and where it lurks. Key steps to get the job done and to overcome the invasive species problem begin with this. Finding it, mapping it, and eventually removing it is where we're trying to get to. What we don't know can impact us, and it can impact our neighbors. So by using a common language, whether that's a computer language or an approach to collecting information, and by sharing that information about occurrences and management responses, we're building capacity through networking. We need occurrence data, impact and risk data, management data, lots of other kinds of information. It all helps us get this to where we're trying to get. An example that I've seen many of you be part of is the need to accelerate efforts to tackle invasive species problem in wilderness areas and wild and scenic river corridors. These are high value areas of ecological and spiritual importance. And in the case of say the Forest Service, we manage over 35 million acres of public lands that are designated as wilderness and over 5,000 river miles of wild and scenic rivers that are designated by Congress. And the entire federal spectrum has similar numbers to that. Park Service does this, the BLM does this, Fish and Wildlife Service does this. It's a lot of great places out there to protect. And it's in the backcountry, and it's in remote areas. It's hard to get to. The Wild Spotter Program provides a great solution to meet this need. And it uses existing EdMaps infrastructure and technology to engage the public, help us overcome capacity limitations to find and map invasions and deal with them before they spread. This is a nationwide citizen science tool that anyone can use. WildSpotter provides a great way to unify the public, builds capacity and gains public support to address the problem. One of the major components of WildSpotter is volunteer recruitment and coordination. Citizen science is a term you're all familiar with. The Wild Spotter program enlists the support of citizen scientists by empowering them in the battle against invasives no matter where people live, work, or play. And we all need to remember to include other innovative tools and technologies that are at our fingertips, literally social media, networking, and communication. This is something that's constantly evolving and extremely complex and growing every year. It's important as we start and grow programs against invasives to advance information networking, to build community around the invasive species issue. And you know, in many cases, it's the younger crowd teaching the older crowd this time and expanding networks and information sharing just worldwide. It's just amazing how fast information is flowing through the social media system. So how are you helping to spread the word online? And this is again where EdMaps really shines, information management and networking. There are many pieces in the information management puzzle. Data collection, data sharing, data housing, information is being managed in so many different ways. It's being updated and it's being maintained. Yet there are still missing pieces at all levels. And we need to work together to fill those gaps in every locality and across all stakeholder organizations not just within the invasive species community. Think about how you will use the information and why it needs to be accurate. Everyone has a different perspective on this. Think about partners who are not in your traditional wheelhouse. How can you work with them to get this done? EdMaps plays a unique role in unifying programs in the sectors to build this capacity and to deal with invasives at all levels. Take advantage of the power of EdMaps programs and technologies and see how EdMaps can help you achieve your goals. By capitalizing on what has already been built, you can advance quicker, build a stronger network, and fill the operational gaps that you're trying to do with your program. So I'm moving along pretty quickly here, but I want to leave you with something before we end. Here's a case study using an example that we're all aware of, the COVID-19 pandemic. So as you watch what I present next, I want you to recall what I said earlier about the pervasive independent streak that we all have in the system. <clears throat> Remember, if we don't unify against the threat and work towards the same goal, we will ultimately fail to prevent and control that threat. The COVID-19 pandemic has proven this. And we got over a half a million dead people because of it, just in our country. Let's not make the same mistakes 
again with invasive species. So this is a slide from a recent study out of the New England Journal of Medicine. Now I'm gonna read this slide for those folks on the line here. This is a presentation about failing the test, the tragic data gap undermined the US pandemic response. Dr. Eric Schneider says, in the information age, the United States seems to be swimming in big data. This country has generated many of the world's largest, most innovative, most profitable data companies. Yet when it comes to forecasting the spread of a major pandemic that is killing Americans and wreaking havoc on our economy, we seem oddly lost. The United States was once a leader in collecting systematic federal data on population health. Now, our national disease tracking effort seems to be stuck with well-meaning but scattershot efforts by tech companies using cell phone signals, social media surveys, online searches, and smart thermometers as we try to guess where the COVID outbreaks may be lurking. That the United States is failing such a simple test of its capacity to protect public health is shocking. Collecting and reporting public health data are not rocket science. You can see what the medical profession is saying about the global pandemic and clearly you see also the link to information and big data. But as you read this, it's easy to replace the pandemic words with invasive species terms and see the similarities. As this illustrates, <clears throat> the invasive species community is making the same mistakes when it comes to information gathering and sharing. Each of us can give an example of where this is happening. But Ed Maps can help us overcome these challenges. Let's rally the invasive species community using Ed Maps and not make those same mistakes that we've been making with the global pandemic. Lives and the economy are at stake. So it's been really great having the chance to share some of these thoughts with you today. I really appreciate all of you for participating. I, I want you to stay tuned. More, more great learning and dialogue on EdMaps during this summer is going to happen. It's really great to have people pull together for this and share those ideas. Learn more about EdMaps and see how we can unify ourselves. So please be safe out there. Take care of your friends and family. Work hard against the invasive species and just keep up the great work.